It's very surprising that we still move our biological systems, like moving the atoms to control bits, right? I mean, you have here a bi biological brain that is often not very motivated, right? So here, uh, like always give 100%, 12% Monday and so on. So that not very motivated, not very focused brain sitting in front of, co of a computer, like this is a biological system needing, needing uh, food and it's very slow compared to digital intelligences and controlling like the keys and the mouse and the cursors and stuff on the computer screen in order to complete some repetitive work and of course controlling the different types of intelligences within the screen, within the computer is often um, like very time consuming because it is limited by, uh, by our own biological speed that uh, we can invest. And uh, interestingly, like even more interesting um, than, than uh, like these philosophical considerations is that Claude has now launched a new computer use model and the idea is fascinating it's like an um an like an epic uh, an interface so to say that sits on top of everything that sees the screen so it can control basically everything um on that on your computer everything you see it also sees and it can, can of course this is very powerful and very dangerous right it can it can do everything you do it is like it serves as a controller of your computer and it can for instance call itself it can open open a certain website it can um, like op open your emails it can see what you see uh, on the screen on the computer screen and thereby it is very easy to integrate this intelligence into our everyday systems and it's very easy to for instance automate our work because m much of our work is basically in front of a computer screen doing very like small copy and paste repetitive work moving things from one spreadsheet to another opening the email uh, client uh, uh, typing in some words right to answer emails maybe checking uh, get, collecting some collecting some information in order to respond to emails and opening new tabs and stuff, right? And like all these repetitive work, even like the recording this video is this type of repetitive work. Most of us basically, yeah, like 90% or so are already using the computer for work or are mainly using computer to do work. And all of this potentially can get disrupted by such a model. Um, Look at the spreadsheets, check if and equipment is... So here you see how somebody would uh, basically type in a prompt and then it will basically um, finish this work, right? So it, 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 it fill, fills out a form, it searches something and it can be really fast, can do this really fast and it, the model does it completely automatically. It moves the cursor, it clicks the buttons, it fills, it performs the search queries and stuff. For instance, another, uh, interesting uh, example is given by Simon Willison and uh, he said he, he like used uh, entropic uh, computer use model uh, to basically ask it to navigate to his website and search for pelicans right and it and it does it it can it can figure out the text sometimes we also get some interesting behavior like this one have a look This was this was it. So it can get uh, sidetracked from time to time. Here you see it. Uh, it basically started searching Google for Yellowstone National Park images. So it was just browsing Google, searching for images. Uh, but it was like it was tasked tasked with another um, exercise, which is like um, a long running scene recording or something. So it should basically just just record the scene. But then it got sidetracked. It searched for photos of the Yellowstone National Park. So it's like an emerging behavior of the AI. Of course, it's still very like clunky. There's a lot of errors and mistakes, but we can already see the future. We can already see uh, what is emerging here. It is like a complete replacement of even our rudimentary um, uh, repetitive tasks that we do as human beings in front of computer screens. And it's very easy to automate those, right? So we will, we will need much less 
um, low level orchestration of computer tasks and um, it like these low level orchestrations or uh, like answering emails and all the boring work all the work that we are not meant to do that make us frustrated and fat and lazy this work will basically be completely automated and um, uh, yeah, we will see a completely different world. And of course, many of us will lose our uh, existing jobs or much of our existing work at least will get automated and we need to reinvent ourselves and stay on the right side of change. And this is really like um, um, impossible to, to, to avoid, right? So to summarize, Claude's new skill is computer use. The Claude 3.5 Sonnet can now interact with computers as people. It can use a cursor to click buttons. It can type text. It can navigate soft software interfaces. It's the first of those type of models. I've already basically discussed a couple of months ago the um, rabbit idea, which was similar, right? But this one, this model works on all operating systems on all computers generally, and it can, can even like the model can call itself, which is really interesting. Uh, yeah, so it's the first one that is available in the public beta. Uh, it can see the screen, understand the context, perform tasks, mimic how a human would operate the computer. Um, it, uh, so how does it work? Maybe you, have, you, you will ask how does it work? It works by, by, by using screenshots and then analyzes the screen, right? So that's why it can miss, miss some, ta some things also. But of course, over time, it will get better and better. And uh, yeah, so it's more, more, more or less like imagine... ChatGPT with image understanding capabilities and the images are then fed in a stream of images are fed into the model and the model is then asked to, for instance, click on a specific point with the context task uh, given by the, by the prompter. And um, yeah, it's, the performance is really interesting. It's got 14.9% in the screenshot only category on OS world which is like an evaluation that tests AI models. And yeah, it starts with 14.9%, right? It will, it will um, um, yeah, improve over time. It will go to, from 14% to 20% to 50% to 70% to 90%, like in all other tasks, right? We have seen in the last two years. So uh, the next one or two years will be, become very interesting. The next five years will be completely disruptive to almost everything. And if you want to stay on top of this, then check out the Finkster Academy. Uh, you can check out, you can, you can complete the learning path, become an AI engineer from scratch and certify your skills. Just go through the courses. If you uh, are a Finkster member, you can go through all of the courses. We have like dozens of courses or just the courses that interest you and learn the skills that are really relevant in, our, in the future and uh, in the present already that, that help you scale your output by not one, not two, but multiple orders of magnitude compared to people who don't use these capabilities. So this is really ne ne like a next level university, very affordable. It's much cheaper than university, but the skills you learn are much more relevant uh, and will actually give you, give you a market value, right? As opposed to the university degree, which oftentimes, I mean, you, can, you, can, you, can, you could argue the university degree will also give you a market value, value but um, just the raw, raw skills you learn at university are often not very marketable. I know from first-hand experience, I have like a PhD in, in, in university um, program. And of course, these skills, I mean, I wouldn't, miss, I wouldn't like to miss the skills, but had I spent 10 years like with such state-of-the-art tools, learning the, directly the skills, the, the hands-on practical skills that create value in the real world, I would be far, uh, um, far more ad advanced at this point. I'm uh, like, I think university is just like, it has, it has emerged as a stale, more or less stale um, learning institution that teaches knowledge that, uh, that is old and that doesn't help you in the real world. Um, this, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a too broad generalization. Sometimes university can be, uh, can be useful. And of course, the people you, you, you get to know at the university, are the connections are really powerful and valuable. And uh, yeah, that's why also with the Finkster Premium Program, I have uh, launched, I have set up a Discord group so you can connect with other students to get to know other 
tech enthusiasts and AI engineers that want to build something with AI, that want to create value, that want to uh, make, generate an income or side businesses using AI. So check out the Things Academy. I will leave a link in the des description below. You can also check out my free newsletter if you, uh, if you aren't al already on the Things newsletter. Uh, we have like 150,000 tech enthusiasts and AI engineers on the newsletter. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Give me a like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.